Good evening everyone and welcome to another Mac Merlin stream. Hopefully my audio is doing much better tonight. I see uh, Itharok and a Jordan Dust Keeps joining in super early. So thank you guys for joining in at the start of the stream. Yeah, let's talk about the first thing that I got. The first thing that I got is not actually keyboard related, but it is related to Mac Merlin as a channel. So as you know, I did my first 2022 meetup. This was at the Optimism Brewery in downtown Seattle. And I realized that, you know, it's kind of hard to film meetup videos with a camera like this, because the screen is super small. Like even when I flip it out like that. So I thought about getting an external monitor for my camera, but external monitors are pretty pricey, right? So I figured I'd use, you know, my phone instead. So what I ended up getting was this little guy right here. This is like that, nothing, nothing too fancy. Where the fanciness comes in is when you connect it to your little monitor plate right there. So let me show you what happens. Now I can attach it to my camera. That fairly short USB-C cable. Anyway, that's beyond the point. Let me show you how it's supposed to work. it's supposed to go in there and now I've got an external monitor for my camera so I don't need to rely on this small display here I can just use my phone so so much more convenient see I can move it whichever way I want I can do it straight down like that see that I think the cables a little bit finicky but yeah will make the next meetup so much easier. Supposedly we have another Seattle meetup at the end of the month, but we also have one that's planned at the end of April. So we'll definitely need something like this so that I can shoot it better. But yeah, Let's see maybe closer to the end of the stream, I'll get it, um, I'll get it working. I think I need to download a few more things. But yeah, this is what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to be nice and Nice and compact. Well, at least as compact as can be. <laughs> so yeah, that's my deal. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the cable because it was just working earlier with a different cable. So yeah, well, we'll try it again later. We'll try it again later. So yeah, tonight we have a couple keyboard things to um, unbox. As many of you know, um, Divinity is one of my favorite vendors. Um, they're actually one of the sponsors that I that, that I support on this channel that I end up, you know, buying a lot of stuff from. So yeah, check them out. They're located in California. Took a while, but yeah, I bought another bunch of things from them this past week. Let's take a look at what I got. Yeah, these ones are the new Owlab stabs. Well, I guess they're not too new anymore. They've, they've been around for a few months. You know, um, Owlab stabs aren't necessarily like the best or anything, but I've noticed that their stab wires are a whole lot better than Durox. So I've been considering moving over to using Owlabs. Oh, Texi Diamond Linears. There we go, Texi Diamond Linears. They are a UHM, WPE stem and top housing along with the PC bottom housing. So because it's UHM, WPE, I'm expecting this to be very smooth. I don't think it's any smoother than other Texi switches, to be honest. Yeah, Texi switches tend to be pretty smooth already. They are definitely a clackier switch, so that's good. I'm not hearing any form of spring ping so far. What spring ping exactly? It is when your spring compresses or when it decompresses, then it has this ping sound. It's very noticeable. And what's, what's really bad about it is if you have a metal plate, that spring ping is then passed on to your plate. So the spring ping, the plate ping, all of that reverberating together in a, in a board that has a fairly large open chassis, then you just have a very rattly keyboard. So the thing is you want to make sure that you eliminate that spring ping first. But yeah, I'd say, 
Maybe a third of the switches have spring ping. That's not too bad. Not bad, not bad at all. I just got a hundred of them. Don't know which board I'll put it in. Actually, no, wait. I remember what board I'm putting this in now. These are the switches I was going to put in my key call. And I picked up something else as well. This little thing from Divinity. Check it out, guys. It is a stem holder of sorts. Makes the lubing process so much easier. Do that then you can lube the stem super easily and not get any lube on your fingers. Last thing I got from Divinity is something I mentioned on my group by new stream. This is the KBD pad Mark II and looks like my light is so blinding here. Let's see if I can lower that a bit. There we go. KBD pad Mark II was not expecting it to come in this fancy case. But look at that. It's a magnetic case as well. KBD packaging, KBD fans packaging has gotten so much better. Comes with the USB-C cable, comes with the tool to take apart the, the board, stabilizers, foam. What is this? This looks to be a palm plate. And I'm assuming this is the PCB. There it is right there. KBD pad. Mark II PCB Rev 1.3. I see the ESD protection circuit right over there. USB-C port. Looks pretty neat. Looks like it's using an Atmega32U2 microcontroller. Not sure. I'm not sure if this is NVIDIA yet or not, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. There we go. Yep, that. That looks pretty neat. I kind of want one for myself now. <laughs> well, here, let me at least put on, let me at least put on the, the feet here. All right. All right, we got the feet on. The next bunch of stuff that I picked up is from Canon Keys, and this one is not something I paid for. Um, Canon Keys has sent this to me. Special note. What is this special note? You know what? I should probably read it first before I show it on screen. <laughs> there is going to be a Brutalist sale on Canon Keys starting March 21st. You will have certain codes that will get you 40% off on a keycap set. If you buy one Brutalist series keyboard, or you can get 45% off a switch bag as well if you get, also if you get one Brutalist series key, keyboard. But here, if you guys aren't familiar with the Brutalist series of boards, it is the Canon Keys budget custom series that Upas first started. It is based on Brutalist architecture, and it is a top mount slash burger mounting kind of board. So yeah, these days a lot of people have been saying that gasket is the only way to go. Um, gasket is just one form of mounting. Um, top mount is also really good. Canon Key sent me a few things. First off, they sent me this. Nice PBT black on gray. Ooh. Not bad. This looks pretty good. Black on gray. In the pictures, it almost looked like that you could not see the legends very well, but this is this is very nice. And of course, because nice PBT packaging kind of sucks. Wow, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Let me just uh, clean it up as best I, as I can. <laughs> yeah, Kanki's pictures are kind of yikes. Love them though. Yeah, I know that's the thing. Okay, now I have to be very careful in how I put this back into the case. Like, I love their packaging. Like, this makes it very easy to, like, store your keycaps. But the actual trays that they come in, it is so, so bad. So terrible. What keycaps are these again? These are the nice PBT um, black on grays. They also sent me nice PBT Sailor. And this is a much more 
creative design. <laughs> nice PBT sailor. Here, let's cue that up. Nice PBT sailor. There we go. Okay, that blue looks really nice. Wow, that was that's much deeper than I was expecting. That is absolutely beautiful. Wow. Okay. This set makes me super happy. Oh my gosh. I love that blue. Holy crap. Okay, and as usual, the bottom tray is always the one that's screwed up. This looks really washed out on the website. I agree with you. Yeah, here, let me just show it off while we're talking about it. This is what it looks like on their site. The blue looks really washed out. I, see? Look at that. Look at that. And now look at the real deal. The blue is actually a lot deeper. Yeah, this looks much better than what I'm seeing on their website. This is, this is absolutely gorgeous. That is very different. This is so much nicer. PBT Sailor is gorgeous. Like I thought it looked good already on their website, but this, this is just a whole, whole nother level. Whole nother level. This is the kind of blue that I like. I'm even going to say this is probably going to look really good on my blue 7V. So that's probably what I'll do. I'll put it on my blue 7V. Yeah, Canon Keys has been extremely generous with me. This is not the last keycap set. Well, yeah, let me just show it to you really quick. But you guys have seen this on my channel before. I I ended up putting it on the Blade 65 because the colors just absolutely matched it perfectly. Yeah, Winter Tundra is one of my favorite sets as well. Yeah, you guys can actually catch my build streams with it. Another thing that they sent me. Those switches. Look at that. These are Gateron CJs. CJs are a linear switch with a ink top housing. It's the same material that ink switches are made of, and a palm bottom housing with a 60 G with the 60 G bottom out. So lately, I got a Gateron Oil King switches, which is currently my favorite deep sounding switch. But I didn't like how heavy they were. Like the ones that I have are 80 G. There's rumor that they're dropping the weight down to like 70 or so, but 80G was a little too heavy for me. So I'm looking at CJs right now. These sound very sharp to me, to be honest. Sound very sharp to me. Let me compare it to a black Gateron Oil Kings. Here, here's a Gateron Oil King. Yeah, Oil Kings are definitely deeper sounding still. This one is still deep sounding, but it's also sharp. Interesting. Let's see, compare it to a Gateron KS9. They kind of sound similar, except this is still sharper sounding than, than the KS9. If it's gonna sound like a KS9, then I'm pretty sure I'll like the CJs as well. Kaneki sent me other random stuff. What the heck is this? Uh, black on gray? I guess these are ISO keys. Then the other random baggie that they sent me, these are snap and stabilizers. Yep, these are the regular cherry ones, I believe. These are just snap ins or clip ins, whatever people call them. Look what Canon keys ended up sending me. This is a Savage 65. Look at all that. comes with the foam or what do you call it? This is the same stuff that they put in like subwoofers. It's like polyfill, I believe. That's that's what it's called. Polyfill screws for the case. Ooh, these are the little burger mounting O-rings. You've got the FR4 plate right there. No, they actually gave me like the option to pick any board from their Boodleist line. And I was really thinking that I wanted a um a what do you call it it's a it's the obliterated 75 and i was like yeah i could use another 75 percent because i love 75s but the obliterated 75 does not have the exploded layout that i like and i was just thinking to myself i'd build it 
and then I just wouldn't use it. Like I actually want to be able to to like it if I'm going to to shill it, you know? <laughs> and I know that for an obliterated 75, I can be like, yeah, it's a good board. And then you'd never see me use it again. If I picked a Savage 65, you'll actually see this on stream. So I'm like, yeah, just give me a Savage 65. Like, I don't want it to just show up in my collection. One more thing that I asked them for, this one I actually bought with my own money. I was like, hey, Canon Keys, I'm actually planning on buying stuff from you guys. Mind uh, sending me an invoice and just throwing it in with the shipment? And they're like, yeah, sure, no problem. This is a Bacaneco 65. Um, I have a couple 65% keyboards that could use a more modern PCB. So I bought one of these to do some test fitments on them. But I'm hoping that the Bacaneco can fit these boards. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed that my theory is correct. There we go. This is the actual Savage 65 PCB. All right, let's let's pull out this board. Let's pull out this board. Look at that. That is a blue Savage 65. Look at that. Um, the thing with it that I'm noticing right now is it's not the, the same shade as nice PBT Sailor. One of my biggest critiques with the Brutalist architecture series is that even though it's it looks good, I've never been a fan of, of, of the Brutalist architecture in general. So stuff like this, that really large cutout for the USB-C port, I don't like that. It's got too many like sharp, sharp edges for me. But that doesn't mean it's a bad board. I just don't, you know, I just don't happen to like that particular design language. X Rogue says Hammerhead Dark. Hammerhead Dark would work on this. I just don't have Hammerhead Dark. What would go on this though is the black on gray that I unboxed earlier. The two shades of blue present on nice PBT Sailor. Look at that. It's not, it's not quite the same shade. Yeah, I don't think this blue is going to work too well. Yeah, I think either black on gray or winter tundra would look better than nice PBT Sailor, which is great because I'm hoping to put nice PBT Sailor on, on my 7V. Let's see, let's take a look at the build quality. But keep in mind, the Brutal series of board is not supposed to be, it, it's not meant to be like cream of the crop. This is like end game custom, right? It's more of their budget level, definitely higher than the um, Bacaneco series, but still relatively budget because it's meant to be in stock. In fact, it's currently in stock right now. But I can see lots of scratches. There's one very visible one right there. You guys should be able to see it on camera. And there's a couple over there. And one over here on the side. All internals so far. How does it look on the outside? I see streaking. I see streaking. I see streaking on all sides. This one actually has vertical streaking on, on it as well. All right, so on the outside, it's very minimal streaking, but there's actually scratches on the inside. It's actually not too bad. Mediocrity says the board looks really nice, but sadly it's a bit hollow sounding. I think that's why they put the um, polyfill in it. And maybe putting a little bit more, a little other items on it as well. Yeah, I really like how Canon Keys, I think Canon Keys was, was one of the first vendors who started shipping cases with all their boards. Like even a Bacaneco comes with a case. So yeah, what we did tonight was unbox a few items. The first couple items were camera related items, stuff that I need to improve my production quality, quality here. The next set was Divinity Key items. Um, got some new switches and a KBD pad, which I will be building for my wife sometime in the near future. After that, we unboxed a generous package from Canon Keys in which they will be having a sale on March 21st on their Brutalist series of keyboards along with their keycaps. 
So yeah, I will be building the Savage 65 courtesy of Canon Keys in the near future. And yeah, tune in, tune in then. It won't be this Saturday because I have a customer build, but definitely the following week. But yeah, thanks guys for joining in. My next stream will be this coming Saturday in which I build a Apollo, an Apollo 80. So thanks guys for joining in. Tune in at 1.30 p.m. PDT for a cool build stream. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.